Hello everyone. Today's topic is on Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is shortly called as KVL. So KVL states that algebraic sum of voltages around any closed loop is equal to zero. KVL states that algebraic sum of voltages around any closed loop is equal to zero. So mathematically it is represented as sigma m is equal to one up to m em is equal to zero where m is number of branches and Vm is mth voltage. Okay. KVL is based on law of conservation of energy. That is, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Let us consider one example in order to in order to understand this thing in detail. In a voltage source, uh, let it be V one and resistors R one. Let the voltage process be V two, V three, then another voltage source. Uh, let us be V4 and find some element. I am predefining the polarity signs. See, loop, well, uh, applying KVL, you can either go in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction. And the sign of polarity is while you're going clockwise, uh, while you're going in any direction, whatever sign polarity you encounter first, that will be the sign of voltage. So if I, now I'm assuming clockwise direction and I'm starting from V1. If you wish, you can start from V2 also. So what I'll get, what is the sign first I'm encountering here while going in clockwise direction? So minus V1. For, for V2, we encountered positive sign plus V2. For uh, you are encountering positive sign for V3 plus V3 is equal to and here you are encountering minus. So minus V4 plus V5 equals to zero. So what you'll get, you can take V1 and V4 to the other side, you'll get V1 plus V4 is equal to V2 plus V3 
plus V5. Okay. Or C. This is, we are going from minus to plus. This is voltage rise. Plus to minus, voltage drop. Here, plus to minus, voltage drop. Minus to plus, voltage rise. Plus to minus, voltage drop. Okay. So, I can also write sum of C V1 plus V4. So, sum of voltage rise is equal to sum of voltage drops also. So, it is sum of voltage rise is equal to sum of voltage drops. You can go in anti-clockwise direction also. So when you go in anti-clockwise direction, apply KVL in anti-clockwise direction. What you'll get? Apply KVL in anti-clockwise direction. Find this circuit again in order to avoid confusion. Okay, apply KVL in anti-clockwise direction. Okay. So I am starting with V4. So it is encountering V4 first minus plus plus V4 minus V3 because anti -clock, when you're going in anti-clockwise direction it's in minus minus V3 minus V2 plus V1 minus V5 is equal to is equal to 0 that is again uh, you can write it as V1 plus V4 is equal to v, V2 plus V3 plus V4. You got same thing. Whether you go in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, you get the same equation. But polarities will be changed. That's it. Now, uh, let us take a small example. Okay, so now let us calculate the voltage across these two elements. Okay, V1 and V2. Apply KVL. We don't know the, I mean, see if the current is entering the resistor, that sign convention is taken as positive. Now let us apply KVL. What do you get? Minus 10 plus what? Uh, v1 plus v2 equals to 0. Okay. But what is v1 from Ohm's law? This will be current I. I into 2. That is 2I. 
Similarly, V2 is 3i into 3 because same current is flowing, whatever current is coming out, same current is flowing through 2 ohm resistor and as well as 3 ohm resistor also. Okay, see, I is the current coming. We observe branch current is equal to the loop current here. So, 3i. Now, substitute this, what do you get? Uh, minus 10 plus 2i plus 3i is equal to 0. That implies 5i is equal to 10. I is equal to 2 amperes. I is equal to 2 amperes. So substitute I your V1 you will get 2 into 2 that is 4 volts and V2 is 2 into 3 that is 6 volts. Thank you. Thank you.